traders, Nick from Vant Trading here, and welcome to another updated trading platform review for 2021. Today, we are going to be talking about interactive brokers. More specifically, I'm going to be talking about their desktop application, Trader Workstation. I'll be going through some of the ins and outs, talk about our opinions about the topics you see here on my side, the from trading fees to hotkeys, charts, executions, API and custom coding, and some overall general features of the platform will be covered at the end. Now, look, this isn't going to be a walkthrough. I'm not going to show you how to set up every single feature on the platform. That will be another video, and I won't be able to cover every feature of this trading platform because, well... That would take hours. There is so much in the way of settings, customization, and some of the features that they offer. But I'm going to walk you through as much as I can. And if you want some more general tools and tips, I'll show that at the end of the video when I give an overall platform review. Now, why are we redoing these platform reviews? Because, look, we do have some older ones on our platform. Well, those are a little outdated in terms of technology and the quality. And there have been some changes in terms of what they're offering, what some of the rules and regulations are, and, you know, just some of the general flavoring of the trading platforms and so it's kind of good to give this an update because interactive brokers more in particular has actually upped their game in some interesting ways i actually am a lot more on board with them than i was a couple of years ago when i first did the trading platform review they've cut some costs they've added some interesting features and i've really gotten to dive into the platform a little bit and kind of look at some of the bells and whistles and it's actually kind of impressive now this trading platform review will be from the perspective mainly of a day trader but i will be giving you kind of some insights and analyses for if you're a swing trader, an options trader, forex trader, whatever. Uh, I'll try my best to give you the most objective opinions when it comes to that. So without further ado, let's let's dive on in. Let's get started. And we are going to start as usual with our trading fees. And I say that because uh, well, you know, mainly this is kind of the first step is, all right, well, how much does this platform cost? And this is one of the areas that trading platforms as a whole have changed the most. Uh, a lot of trading platforms out there have actually cut costs and given you commission-free structures. Interactive Brokers is one of those platforms that has done that. Now, I was very hard on them before because, well, they had a little bit of a pricey structure. And to an extent, they still do to some extent. And look, based on what country you're in, this could change. But let's take a look at some of their trading platform fees. Now, this is going to differ based on whether you have this Interactive Brokers Lite plan, which is in the middle column there, or the Interactive Brokers Pro plan, which is in the furthest column away from me. All the features are going to be in the left. I couldn't even fit everything on the screen that's different, but if you take a look at the main thing, which is the commission-free structure sitting right there for the Interactive Brokers Lite, and I will circle that for you with my mouse. Uh, and so it actually looks pretty good, you know? They do have some pricing tiers, however, still, if you want to trade options, futures, forex bonds, so you know they they did it they did well for the average day trader um, but it doesn't in over encompass everything now in terms of their fixed and tiered pricing they do have that outlined on their website i would encourage you to look at that because it gets kind of complex and it's kind of hard to explain uh, fixed pricing is obviously not going to change whether you increase the amount of shares or not it does vary a little bit within there and then the tiered pricing is going to be a lot better if you trade a lot of volume obviously and so if you're maybe a larger hedge fund or you're someone who swings with a lot of size and trades a lot of shares that might be more your speed uh, if you're trading those other accounts there now, some things to note with their fees. Yes, they have the zero commissions and they've got those other things. There are some other data fees in here as you might require them. Uh, one nice thing is stagnant cash is not going to be charged. You'll get a little bit of interest on that. Um, and there is no maintenance fee, although with the pro account, you do get that little bit of monthly payment, it seems. Uh, but it's very, very minimal. Nothing that you really have to worry about. Uh, Otherwise, you know, if you have an institutional account, you're going to have to go the pro. Uh, if you go that free account, you're not going to have access to the web trader, but you do have access to the mobile trader, which is interesting, and you won't have access to the API, which is something we'll talk about a little later. You do have free market data, however, for the U.S. if you are a free account, which is pretty nice for the average trader. So I think most of the people watching this will probably be going down the Interactive Brokers Lite path which is pretty nice. I mean, you know, you can see the see the features here and it's actually not too bad. So, 
you know, it's they've gotten a lot better. This is a lot better than how interactive brokers used to be. And, you know, it's gotten a lot more manageable, and they seem to be relatively competitive with the industry. But, you know, they're not going the full commit like, say, a, a Thinkorswim or someone like that who's just gone, ah, eh, just take everything for free at this point. So that's why we're going to give their trading fees a B. It's pretty good. You know, it, it, it's about standard with what you would hope you would get. Uh, if you're the average uh, day trader who's just going to have that light account, you're going to have the free commissions. You're going to have the free market data, which is awesome. And you could probably pay for some more bells and whistles. So, uh, you know, I'll let you go in there and kind of suss out some things and see what the actual cost structure is if you're going to be going a little more complex. But it's pretty good. It's not the worst we've seen. It's not the cheapest. Now let's talk about the account types and minimums. This is another area that interactive brokers has actually really improved upon and has continued to elevate and step up their game. Before they had a pretty hefty minimum uh, deposit required. I'm pretty sure their minimum deposit used to be $10,000 or more. Now, obviously, if you're a day trader, you're going to need more than that to, to get over that 25,000 pattern day trade rule anyway. But if you were just someone who wanted to get in there, maybe swing a little bit, do a little speculation, that was pretty hefty compared to the rest of the industry. They have dropped that, to my knowledge, completely. Now, there are some minimum deposit requirements if you want to do, say, margin and such. We'll cover that in a moment. First of all, let's take a look at their page here which is where they show all of the types of accounts that they have. So this is straight from their page here, and you can see a pretty decent list here of the amount of accounts you can open. I mean, we're talking individual IRAs, joint IRAs, hedge fund, mutual fund accounts, compliance officers, administrators, small business accounts, family office accounts. I mean, there's a lot of options in here. You know, this is actually kind of impressive for the amount that they do. And this is kind of how I want you to think about interactive brokers. They're actually a little, they're probably the most global focused platform out there in my opinion they are very global based they have a very good global presence they give you a lot of kind of outside of the US I'm talking from a US centric perspective outside the US uh, in terms of the information you can get and the amount of things you can do uh, so that's really good so if you're kind of a global minded person who has a lot of capital and wants to look at a lot of interesting things or do a lot of cool things this is definitely gonna be the platform for you and an example of that is in just the amount sheer amount of accounts that you can open so there's a lot of variability there. Now, most of the people out there are just going to be opening the standard traditional uh, trading account, and that's perfectly fine. Now, they used to have that minimum deposit. They don't anymore. Now, if you want to have market data and you're going to pay for that, you need to, I believe, at the, at the point I'm filming this, have to deposit $2,000. However, you only need to maintain a balance of $500 just to make sure that, oh, oops, I went over. Now I can't pay for the market data that they've already given me. Whoopsie-daisy. Now my account's negative. So they're just trying to protect themselves and protect you by doing that. It's only $2,000, so it's not that bad. If you want margin, however, I believe their initial deposit they require for a margin account might still be ten thousand uh, dollars I saw some people saying well you know if you do something fancy you can get around that and that's fine for us when we open the account uh, to, to work with and to try investing with uh, we needed that ten thousand dollars initial deposit but then you only need a balance of two thousand dollars and look that's about standard most platforms aren't going to let you have margin if you deposit less because then that's risky for you and for them. They will offer you the standard two-for-one margin uh, over, uh, overnight and a four-to-one margin intraday. So you get that standard rate and the standard return there with the account uh, and the margin. So that's good. And that's why overall we're going to give their account types and minimums an A. This is about as good as it gets in the industry you know th they don't really require you to put too much in anymore and and they're really willing to work with you you've got a ton of options when it comes to actually opening up accounts and such so that's going to be really nice now let's actually start diving into the platform itself shall we i know a lot of you are like well come on man you know we're talking about trader workstation here let's get on into it so let's do it and let's start off as always with charting and I do this just because, you know, a lot of day traders out there and a lot of traders out there, they need charts to some degree. So that's how we're going to kick this off. Let's pull up. Bam. Here's our trader workstation. <coughs> Pardon me. And this is live. So, you know, we're in the middle of a trading day. Ignore kind of the things going on around you. Try to look at me and look at what I'm saying. And let's kick it off as always with the charts. Here's what your standard trader workstation chart is going to look like. 
it's okay. You know, this is a, it's, a, it's a chart. You know, it's a standard chart. And in terms of what you can get here, I want you to remember something when it comes to trading platforms. And I say this in all of the trading platform reviews. Typically, you're going to have two things that you're going to compete against. Do you want good charts or do you want good executions and, and hotkeys and other bells and whistles? I haven't really found a platform that marries both perfectly. That's perfectly fine, in my opinion. I also, you know, there's plenty of platforms out there I haven't really been able to fully try. Um, and in this case, Trader Workstation has definitely foregone some of the bells and whistles of the charts, like say a Thinkorswim is given, but has really honed in on some of the other day trading aspects, which is fine because you can use another platform's charts while you execute trades on here. Or if you're very, you know, you don't need much in terms of bells and whistles with the charts, this might suffice because if you look, this is a chart and I can use my scroll wheel, I can zoom in and out, I can switch between a bar or a candlestick getting real fancy there and you know I can do some other interesting things so if I go in here I can add some commentary I can type on the chart I can also get in here and start increasing or decreasing the bar width making it a little easier to see hopefully for some of you maybe hard of seeing um, and you know if I move around I can have a nice little crosshair but if I get in here and I can change my time frame and you know that's good it's what you would hope you'd get they do have studies now it's not going to be those comprehensive studies you've ever seen I can get in here and say put in some moving averages, I can put in Bollinger Bands, I can put in a, a number of things. It's not unbelievable, but the standards seem to be in there. And if I want to do some drawings, it's not the fanciest thing, but I could draw some trend lines and that'll show up and sit there. It's kind of hard. Look, if I want to manipulate them, I have to really like zoom in. Oh, wait, there it is. And I can right click on it, remove it, uh, and do some things in there. It's not the easiest to really manipulate. So if you're trying to hit the charts really fast and you're trying to, whoops, uh, move around really quickly and you're trying to like uh, you know you're trying to like do stuff in the fly while you're day trading this might not be for you because it, at least they're charts because you know they, they can be kind of hard to see it can be kind of hard to quickly move around and manipulate and they don't give you this these crazy easy you know when I'm using think or swims charts for example I can right click the mouse button pull up all these studies and start moving things around and yes you may be able to do some chart things with the hotkeys so it may be worth examining there if you're someone who's going to set up your charts ahead of time and, you know, this is good enough for you, then this might be fine. And so the charting won't necessarily be an issue for you. So they're okay. You know, charting is not terrible, which is why we're going to give their charting a B-. minus. I could sit here and continue talking about their charting. I don't want you to, you know get too lost in the weeds here because look when you have the charting yes you can pull this up you can add some studies you can add other financial instruments in there you can do some interesting chart parameters and and, and you have some customization options which is nice in terms of visually uh, how it looks to you so if maybe you're hard of seeing or you like certain colors better or you want to do some different funky things on here they do have that it's gonna it's just gonna take some time for you to sit there and really set it up and when I eventually go over their global configuration and some of the settings they have you'll see that you know there's actually some good customization customization on this platform in terms of visual appearance in terms of what information the platform gives you so it's actually pretty good and yes I can go in here I can resize my charts I can add multiple charts in here I can link charts to each other if I go into say uh, if I go into say like a, a practice account here that I've set up you know you see this chart down here if I change you know the 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 market or the ticker that I'm looking at it'll change the chart with it it'll change all sorts of features on here so that's really good I don't want to dive into that part too much because we're focusing on the charts but it's pretty good and so it's definitely good and that's why we give the charting a B minus it's not abysmal you can absolutely you know get by with them and you can change them on the fly and you can you know move them around and resize them but it's obviously just not the best that's all so let's take a quick recap. Where are we? Not too bad. Trading fees looking good. Account types and minimums gotten a lot better. Look, this is a lot better than when it was a couple years ago. They've definitely catered to the more casual audience, in my opinion, where before they were very corporate and hedge fundy. Now, you know, you could open up a day trading account on here. Let's move on and let's get into some more day trading stuff and let's talk about hotkeys. Uh, if you're a day trader and speed is your king and you don't want to touch the mouse as much as possible because, you know, that can really slow you down. And so 
If you want to get fancy with it, well, guess what? They actually offer some decent hotkeys, especially compared to, say, like a Thinkorswim or something, which really doesn't offer much at all. So if I go into files, I go into global configuration. First of all, look at the sheer amount of options that are in here. There is a lot that you can configure, which is great. If I go into hotkeys, however, you can see that there's a decent amount of pre-made hotkeys. Already, the pre-made hotkeys in here are already much more vast and, and, and interactive and intuitive intuitive than, you know, say a Thinkorswim's hotkeys. I keep hitting on Thinkorswim and it's just because, you know, it's the easiest one to compare something like hotkeys to. So no offense to Thinkorswim, I use them for their charts. Um, but yeah, so you can go in here and say you want to change a buy order. I can go in here, create my shortcut. I can customize my own hotkeys. Yes, I love it when platforms do this. In my opinion, this is a big deal for day trading platforms because you can do a lot in here. Look at this. I can obviously change the buy and sell. I can change the sizing to give me some hotkeys to quickly change the sizing when it comes to the order. If I go into, say, like a limit order, I can then say, all right, well, I'm going to limit uh, the ask plus five cents. And this is something that I've done a lot when I've day traded and I need to be in and out because it's a little more aggressive than, say, just buying the ask. But it's not as aggressive as a market order. Or I could do, you know, the bid minus five cents or something along those lines. So you have a lot of variability there. I could do some stop prices, some trailing stops. Look at the types of orders if I go in here and extend this. They've got a lot. I don't even know what all this is. I'm not going to try to figure out what all of it is because, you know, this is a lot of stuff in here. And you might be able to f suss out what a lot of this is just by looking at the abbreviations. But they give you a lot of routing options and a lot of order type options. Really awesome. I can automatically attach a stop order to it. I can automatically attach a profit taking order to it. So you can actually do some pretty cool intuitive things that, you know, the average day trader, the average person who doesn't think about hotkeys, this might be something worth exploring because you can do some really cool and interesting things. So there's a whole lot of different routing. You could do some options algorithms, Forex algorithms, warrant and futures. I mean, it's not bad. You know, there's a lot of different products you can use those hotkeys with. You can also use the hotkeys to, you know, move around and modify orders, canceling orders, bailing out, uh, maybe moving around the platform, which is really good, pulling up news quickly. So they're very intuitive with the hotkeys. It's definitely one of the better platforms out there in terms of hotkeys, in my opinion, which is why, and I actually think that this rating could probably be increased. I, you know, this says B minus. I say it's really a B plus. Uh, this is really good. It's really intuitive. There are some things missing and some features missing, and it might be a little hard to get it set up. And 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 you know, I haven't really just practiced every single kind of hotkey out there, so I can't tell you if it's the you know the most incredible thing out there. And it's definitely not the best in the industry, but it's really really good. So not bad. Now let's talk about locating shares because, you know, if you're a day trader and, you know, say you want to short a stock that's hard to borrow, you're trading those low float stocks, those pump and dumps, whatever, you're going to need to locate shares at some point in order to short. You need to borrow those shares, pay for them so that you can sell the shares that you don't already have. Now, it's pretty good. It's actually better than some platforms because it does try to integrate that process within the platform itself, which is always an A plus for me when they try to integrate that. Now the actual execution's okay. So let's pull this platform back up. I'm gonna pull this page up here. See, for example, I opened up a nice little scanner down here, or this is a watch list. I can type in stocks willy nilly. I could go in here and say type in Apple, and it'll pull an Apple. It will pull in Apple. All right, how about Spy? Hey, I traded in Spy. I must already have Apple somewhere. That's odd. But anyway, so I, you could pull in the stock, and I added this column in here, which is shortable shares. And I did that just by going in here, and we'll talk about this more at the end of the video, but I was able to add a column that shows the amount of shortable shares. So now, just easily, if I set my watch list up ahead of time, I can see if there are already shares available to short for free without worrying about it, and if so, how much. That's really nice. If there aren't, I can right-click on here, and I can go pre-borrow shares for shorting. Now, I've, I, the little bit I tried to use this, it got a little, see, it got a little funky with this thing, and it, but it brings up this window here, and it looks like you can try to request shares ahead of time. You might have to wrestle with it a little bit and talk to them about how you use that properly, but the fact that that's integrated in the platform is awesome. And what you can do is if you try to short a stock and it doesn't have the shares available, you can submit the order out there, leave it hanging out there while they try to locate the shares for you. 
I mean, you know, that's okay. Uh, you know, it, it'll probably take a long time, and you might forget about that order, and you don't want to leave that order just hanging out there, especially with how long it might take. But the fact that they make that as an option, you know, I can't ding them against for trying to give you that option. So that might not be the fastest method, but it is a method in general. So look, this isn't the worst platform in terms of locating shares by any means. Not the best. Uh, the fact that they try to make it seamless and, pr and integrate that within the platform for you without you having to deal with their terrible customer service is a good thing. So that's definitely going to be a plus, and that's why we are going to give their locating shares a B plus. It's much better than some platforms, not quite as good as some others, but I really like it. Uh, it's definitely not the best in terms of day trading, but look, if you don't even trade those types of shit stocks and you really rarely have to locate shares, it might not be a deal breaker, but even if you needed it, it seems pretty easy and intuitive. Now let's talk about simulated trading, and I'm not going to pull up their actual paper trading account. If you don't know what paper trading account is, first of all, they have it, which is really nice. A lot of platforms don't have that and don't even bother, but basically they can give you $100,000 in fake monopoly money. You open up what is equivalently the same exact platform with the same exact features, and you can toy around with the platform and actually try to execute things on there, do some practice trading. We always recommend that if you're a new trader and you've never done it before, you should definitely try that at first just to make sure you're familiar with the platform before you put some real skin in the game. Now, I haven't used it personally, but I've heard that it's the exact same play platform with the exact same abilities and capabilities. I don't know if the, if the data that they give you is delayed or not, but I'm sure you could probably upgrade that if you had an account anyway. But the fact that they have a simulated trading account, they try to bridge that gap for new traders, and they try to give you that option to kind of explore the account, that's a good thing. And so we'll give them an A because, look, many people don't have it. Thinkorswim has it. That's a really good thing. You could do a lot of cool things with it. So this is just another example of that. Let's take another look at where we are today. Looking pretty good, honestly. The worst things they have really is the charting. The charting and the trading fees are not bad, but they're okay. But we're already looking pretty good in terms of day trading, especially when we're looking at those hot keys and we're looking at some of the share locates and such like that. Now we're going to burn through a couple more of these. We're going to talk about mobile and web trading, the API, the executions, customer service, and then we're going to go through the rest of the platform. So first off, the mobile and web trading. I'm not going to sit here and show you my phone and show you the mobile app, but I, I snagged some pictures from interactive brokers and from just some Google searches, honestly, and this is what it looks like. And I looked at some of the capabilities that it offers, and it actually looks pretty good. First of all, the fact that they have a pretty good interactive mobile platform is really nice. You can trade options on there. You can monitor your watch list. The charting actually seems pretty decent. It's not going to be the best, but look, you're on your phone. You can't be expecting A-plus charts anyway, and you can monitor your positions, and it seems pretty intuitive. Uh, you can also go on their web trader online, which is about standard for any web trader. They offer you a lot of capabilities in terms of changing things, monitoring accounts, and executing trades. And so it actually, you know, from what I was looking at with reviews, it's pretty nice. Now, what, one thing that I didn't see anything, which I thought was so cool, was that Thinkorswim, you're able to trade on your Apple Watch. I don't know if that's really necessary, and I don't think they have this for interactive brokers, which is fine. You know, I'll trade on the tablet or the phone or, or your laptop if you're on the go and you need to check your portfolio. So the fact that they have this, I'm not going to sit here and harp on it too much. Whoops. I'm not going to harp on it too much because they do have the mobile trader. It is pretty decent. Uh, they do have the, mo the web trader. You can trade options on it. I don't know if they give you any extra costs in there. Remember, you don't have the web trader if you, don't ha if you are on the interactive broker's light account. But the fact that they have that is good. And so that's why we're going to give their mobile trading an A. It's good that they have it. It seems pretty intuitive and pretty easy to use, and that's all that matters. Uh, now let's talk about their API and custom coding, because this is actually where it can get a little robust. And if you don't know uh, what any of this is, you know, being able to go in there and custom customize things yourself on the back end, put some custom orders in there, code in some strategies, some auto traders, some things that literally trade for you and find uh, plays, some custom scanners, integrating other software in the back end, and doing some interesting things on the back end. They actually offer it, and they actually have a whole lot of options in here. I can't sit here and go through this alone because this will take too long, but here are some of the features that they have on their website. You know, they talk about, they have different languages, and you know, they, they do Python, C++, uh, C++, uh, Java, a whole bunch of different options. Or what you could also do, and we actually have a trader that does this, he sat there and he coded an entire trading strategy on Excel, and then he linked the platform somehow through the API to Excel, 
and it just traded on its own. And it was an, it was a it was a literal black box. Now you know it wasn't this HFT scalping monster, obviously, because the executions weren't fast, and you know there's some slowness between reading Excel. But you know he was good at Excel coding, and he was like, well, let me see if I can do this, and he could. And it was actually really cool. And you could do the API software across markets, across countries. Like I said, this is a very global centric platform. They have very global focus, and so they offer you a lot of cool things. I can't open it, sadly. Uh, only one of our traders has access to it, and I couldn't get a hold of him, and, and it would be a whole process to go through it. There are plenty of reviews, I hope, on this API software that I would encourage you to go look at if you want to know more. But the fact that you can get in there and custom code some things, uh, customize a lot of kind of the back end and you know, the platform, and, and you can get access to market news and market data and tick data and past historical data to do back testing. That's really, really, really cool. And if it's something that you're remotely interested in, this is definitely a plus in your favor. And it's why we give them an A because some platforms don't even bother or the ones that they do have might be kind of shoddy or kind of weird or they don't offer back testing or simple executions and black box offerings. And it seems like that they do offer some kind of uh, mix and hodgepodge within there. And it seems like you have a lot of customization. So definitely a plus in their favor. I can't dive into it too much. I apologize, but it seems really good. Now let's talk about executions, because if you're a day trader, this is definitely something that you're going to want to know about. You know, can I customize my executions? Can I change my routing? Can I change what I'm doing on the platform? And the answer is absolutely yes. Now, first of all, with the executions, it's actually a little more robust than some of the other standard ones. Not the best in the industry. It's probably top. I would definitely say it's the upper echelon out there, actually. You can hide your orders. You could submit a whole bunch of different orders. When I pulled up that platform, and let me pull it up again, if I pull up these global settings and I go back to the hotkeys and we go back in, let's say, buy, and, and create that shortcut, there are a lot of order options. There's a whole lot of things you can do. You can also change whether it's going to a black box or, or a black box. They also have this really interesting, let me go to their smart uh, router, because if I can find smart routing, the smart routing apparently is really cool because you can customize where that smart routing does, if it goes to a dark pool or not. Some platforms don't even care about that. Uh, you can Apparently, they claim that the smart routing can save you a whole bunch of costs, and you can measure whether it's about speed or execution. And there's a little bit of customization in there. So that's really good. And the fact that you can change that and get some good executions and, and have a level two in time and sales and, and be able to quickly submit some interesting routing and orders, that's really good. Execution seems to be quick. They seem to be effective. I do want to put a caveat here that I've actually had some issues here because I tried trading with them for a month. I was like, let's give it a try. You know, who would I be to give a review without actually having some money on it and giving it a try for a month? And, um, I had an issue. I had an issue where I had an order out there and it completely ignored my order and just they couldn't figure out what happened. They admitted that it was software in there and I think they had a technical glitch and a hiccup. Platforms have this all the time, sadly, so I can't really just hone in on theirs. Every platform I've, I've, I've traded on has had some kind of technical difficulty or glitch. It's very complicated software. Obviously, a lot of people use it, whatever. But it did cost me a little bit of money. It was a little frustrating. But apparently, the routing and the executions are really good. Uh, and, you know, there, I didn't see a way to kind of customize the ECN routing, which is unfortunate, uh, being, not being able to route that way and choose whether you want to go to Arca, Bats, Ejects. But that's a small thing for some traders, so it shouldn't be a big problem. So this is why we're going to give them an A-. They get docked for a few things, but it's really, really good. Let's talk about one more thing before we dive on into the platform. Customer service and customer support. And I've talked about this before. Look, if you're going to be day trading on a platform, there's probably going to be a time where you're going to need to reach out to customer service. Something isn't working. You need some questions answered. Why is this order not routing? Or how do I do something? And so you're going to have to call them or you're going to have to go in the chat. And look, the, the, amount, the way that I can only give my opinion here is based on my limited interactions. My limited interactions have not been good. Uh, they do have a 24-7 chat service. Some of that is integrated in the platform, which is really nice. Um, but, you know, when I've tried to call them, they've had very long wait times. That happens. Um, you know, they're definitely one of the top brokers in the market. So they have a lot of big customers. You're going to get put at the bottom of that line. And yes, I've been able to get a hold of people to answer my questions actually pretty decently. They have some very intelligent people over there. But some of them are just straight up, and I'm, I'm going to curse here, so 
bless your poor ears, a lot of them are assholes. And it's been very frustrating, and sometimes they've been condescending when I know that they're wrong and they're misunderstanding what I'm talking about. So, you know, we've had to work through some hiccups there uh, for sure. But look, obviously this is going to be very, uh, you know, depends on who you get on the other line or the other side of the phone call, and the customer service can be okay. Um, I've I've had some issues getting a hold of them. So, for example, when those orders didn't trigger properly and when they cost me money and they admitted it, it was like pulling teeth to get them to respond to that and to get them to reimburse me. It was like squeezing blood out of a stone. And you know what? They can do whatever they want there. But it was very frustrating, so definitely keep that in mind. I give their customer support a C. Uh, I've never had a pleasant interaction with people. It's always just been fine. They're always able to answer your questions. And again, this is going to be kind of biased here. Now, where are we so far? Because look, we've covered a lot here. And I'm about to go through the over pl overall platform and our general in, um, kind of thoughts about it and some other bells and whistles. It's looking pretty good here. You know, this is actually a pretty good day trading software, in my opinion. It used to be really mediocre. It used to be for big platform, uh, big accounts only, really, and and large swing traders or global focused people. And it definitely still is for that. If you're a global focused person, you want some of these interesting things, then this could definitely be the platform for you. And I absolutely think that you could day trade on this platform pretty effectively. Um, now let's actually talk about the platform because there are some interesting things that I want to talk about. More in particular or some, some good things about it and some bad things about it. So here is the platform. Obviously, you've seen this before. In terms of what, you know, who this is good for, if you have multiple monitors, it's okay, you know, because what I can do is if I unlock this, because now, you know, if it's locked, I can't accidentally drag things, which is nicely, I could move these things off of the screen, off of this platform window, and try to put them on the, the, the desktop itself. I've had some issues with that. They were really kind of frustrating me trying to move things. It would snap to something else as they wait. Um, but you can customize your platform pretty nicely. If you only have one platform, it's a or one, sorry, one monitor, it's actually pretty nice. There, there we go. So literally it just disappeared on me. And you've seen some of the frustrations and wrestling I've had to do with this platform uh, while I've been doing this. Sometimes it gets a little clunky and trying to change the, the ticker I'm looking at isn't the fastest and trying to do things. So there is a little bit of, of clunkiness still to it, but every platform has that to an extent. Now, there is a lot of cool things you can do in here. First of all, this is what their basic page that you would get looks like, and it gives you a little taste of everything. You can set up a scanner, and the scanners are actually pretty good. Look, they have some pre-made ones like the big movers or the most active. I could go in here and I could customize, and when I customize this, uh, I could change some interesting things. Oh, you're going to be difficult on me. Well, there you go. Uh, they do have the news services, which they give you some rankings and some bullish or bearish biases to it based on what uh, stock it's connected to, and you can see some in interesting information here. If I go back to say just this example one here, I can go into a new window. This is a lot that I can open. I can go in here and I could add all sorts of interesting things. Market depth, there's some interesting time and sales things. I could do a lot of interesting scanners. And here's the scanner I wanted to show you. If I go in here and go into settings, look at all of these columns I could add. I could do things with options. I could do things with ETFs. And in that case, I could do like asset class, alter score, whatever the hell some of this stuff is. They actually have a lot. And it's very interesting the amount of stuff that you can customize. You can get fundamentals on here if you want to scan and filter and get some interesting information by fundamentals. And then you can obviously change the colors and such, and you can get some pretty cool stuff. That is for my watch list there if I'm setting up something that I want to monitor. In terms of getting some other things, well, look, I talked about the global configuration and the sheer amount of stuff that you can do here and customize. There is a lot. It's actually a little overwhelming when you first look at it, and it's going to take some time to work through it, but that's a good thing. You are able to trade Forex on here. You are able to trade options. You can trade pairs and all sorts of other stuff on here. They have education things. I can't speak to them, but they do apparently have some education videos and tutorials built in here, so that's very helpful and intuitive and they've got a lot of stuff. I had mentioned if you only have one monitor, say you have one monitor, which is perfectly fine, or you have, you're on a laptop, you can do this cool thing with the tabs down here. We'll say, say I put a different ticker on every tab, and that different ticker has a chart in the, in the execution software, so I can quickly cycle around between different charts. That's really nice, actually. So say I want to pretend like I have 10 monitors. I can set 10 different pages down there with all different charts tracking different things, and then I've got all sorts of different setups I can do, and all it takes is for me to change between the tabs. So that's actually really nice. Yes, I can drag the things off of this window if I need to, and that's fine, too. 
A lot of the other windows that they have, we've already talked about it. You can get analyst research and you can get you know, some templates. You can get a lot of news in here, some fundamental news. You can get uh, the, the calendar events. There's actually a whole lot of fundamentals I can get. What if I get the fundamentals explorer? I can go in here. This is already looking at the Euro USD. That's actually kind of cool. What if we pull up, say, Apple? Give it some time here. There we go. And you actually get a whole bunch of interesting and easy access information on Apple. I can go to dividends, financials, analyst ratings, forecasts, sentiment, whatever. And so there's a whole lot of information that you can get from here. In fact, the platform in terms of what it offers you in terms of information is borderline staggering in some ways. They give you a whole lot of stuff. They've got this iBot thing that's supposed to help you kind of intuitively navigate if you're looking for something. So they do try to help you with the customer support and customer service without you having to talk about talk to anyone on the phone, which is really nice. But I mean, the sheer amount of stuff I could get and the sheer amount of information that could be at my fingertips is very nice. Now, look, you can get one of these order entry windows and you can still do a lot of customization on here. So if you don't want the hotkeys, that's still pretty good. I can link all of these windows to each other. So if I go from, say, Apple to Oracle, it changes everything for me. I can see the options calendar down here. I could click on something. Bam, it pulls up the options for me. That was really convenient, really pretty easy. So speed is a pretty good factor on here. So overall, look, the platform's gotten better. It's gotten a lot better in the years. And so we're already over 30 minutes. So I want to kind of wrap this up. But overall, I give this platform a B plus. It could borderline be an A minus. This is probably one of the decent day trading platforms out there. If you need information and, and you're a global thinking person or you want to look at some of this other stuff, it might not be a bad idea. I wouldn't say it's the best day trading platform out there. You do have better options. But if for some reason they, there's something that these guys offer that others don't, the rest of the features are actually pretty good. And look, you know, they have a paper trading account. I'm pretty sure you could open that up for free. So if you're remotely interested in this, just try it. See if you can open up a paper trading account without putting any money in, manipulate it around, see if it, it's intuitive enough for you and, and go through the bells and whistles. Uh, there's plenty of other videos out there on interactive brokers. Uh, it's a pretty good platform overall. Look, I, like I said, this wasn't supposed to be a tutorial tutorial on the platform, but rather our general impressions. And our general impressions are that they are improving in terms of the average day trader. They are pretty good in terms of if you're just managing a portfolio or you're swing trading. I think that they're actually acceptable. Their fees get a little pricey in some cases, and it really depends on what you need and what you're going to pay for. But, you know, it may not be something that's the worst out there. So, look, that's all I can give you on this because I don't want this to go any longer than it already has. I apologize as it is that it's gone this long, you know, but you know, interactive brokers as a whole has improved and they've definitely tried to keep up with the industry while still maintaining their snooty kind of upper class uh, exterior and still charging you for some things, but that's perfectly fine. I, you know, if someone came up to me and they said they day traded on interactive brokers, I would not immediately judge them. I wouldn't laugh at them. I'd be curious as to what features they like the most and what really drew them to this platform because there are some interesting features. And I look, I'll be completely honest. There, are, I could guarantee you, there's tons on here that I was not even able to discover or cover just by sheer time. So I hope that this was helpful and informative. Keep an eye out for some of our other trading platform reviews. If you really like this or this resonated with you, drop a like or drop us a follow and subscribe so you can get notifications as more trading platform reviews are posted. Keep an eye out on our Twitter, our Facebook, or our Instagram, all our forward slash Vant Trading, and see if we give any more stock call outs, put out any more reviews, and there will be a lot more content to come in 2021. This was Nick from Vant Trading. I appreciate you all tuning in, and as always, safe trading.